In many ways, Lata Mangeshkar was the voice of India. Generations have grown up listening to her melodious voice through the years, and many of her songs have become timeless memories etched in our minds forever. As a journalist, I have often wondered how overwhelming it will be for the Indian media to report on the day she passes. How will the high and the mighty of the country, and perhaps even the world, pay their tributes? Besides, of course, being an extremely sad day for her family, today is that day. Watch this video till the end for some really, really unknown facts from the life and times of Lata Mangeshkar. Lata Mangeshkar has died in Mumbai's Breach Candy Hospital today. She was 92. She was taken to the intensive care unit last Tuesday after testing positive for COVID-19. She had been put on a ventilator, but ultimately, she died and lost the battle to death and breathed her last because there was a multiple organ failure earlier today. Lata Mangeshkar, a recipient of the Bharat Ratna, Padma Vibhushan, Padma Bhushan and Dada Sahib Falke Awards, was an icon of Indian cinema. Having sung playback for countless Hindi films, she also sang in several regional languages including Marathi, Gujarati and Bengali. In fact, she even sung in a lot of South Indian languages as well. Lata Mangeshkar, who belonged to a prominent musical family, also composed music and produced a handful of films herself. She was popularly known as the Nightingale of India. Lata Mangeshkar, born in 1929, was the eldest of the five siblings. Their father was a classical musician named Pandit Dinanath Mangeshkar, who gave the young Lata Mangeshkar her first music lesson. In 1942, when her father died, 13-year-old Lata Mangeshkar began her career in music, juggling singing with acting parts in Marathi films. In 1945, Lata Mangeshkar had an early hit in the song Aayega Aane Wala from the film Mehel, starring Madhubala. From there, Lata Mangeshkar's voice and career soared to the greatest of heights. She sang rag-based compositions for Naushad in films like Baju Baura, Mother India and Mughle Azam, Shankar Jaikishan's melodious hits in Barsat and Sri Charsobis, Salil Chaudhary's haunting melodies in Madhumati won her a Filmfare Award and three more Filmfare Awards came by from B. Salbat, Khandan and Jine Ki Ra. After a point, Lata Mangeshkar refused to accept any more popular awards to promote fresh talent in the industry. Of course, she also won three national awards for Parichai, Kora Kagas and Lekin. Other memorable films in her credits include Pakiza, Abhiman, Amar Prem, Andi, Silsila, Chandni, Sagar, Rodali, Dilwale Dulhaniya Le Jayenge, Veer Zara and many many others. But yes, Veer Zara became the last Bollywood film in 2004 where Lata Mangeshkar gave a haunting, a very haunting performance in playback in the music composed by the late Madan Mohan. Among Lata Mangeshkar's most iconic songs is the patriotic composition E Mere Vatan Ke Logo, the song commemorating Indian soldiers who died in the 1962 war with China and was performed on Republic Day in 1963 at the National Stadium in New Delhi. Lata Mangeshkar sang it live in the presence of the then President of India S. Radha Krishnan and Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru. She recorded her last ever song, Saugan Mujay Smitti Ki, composed by Mayuresh Pai as a tribute to the Indian Army and the nation. It was released on 30th March 2019. But now it's time to spill the beans on some of the rarest of rare known facts about Lata Mangeshkar collected from various autobiographies and her interviews. By her own admission, Lata Mangeshkar was too scared to sing in front of her father. In an interview, she talked about how she would run into the kitchen and force her domestic helpers to listen to her sing. She said her mother would often scold her and shoo her away for wasting her time. But one day, all of that changed when she corrected one of her father's students who was singing a wrong rag. Her father then started teaching her, who she says predicted that she will be so successful that no one would ever be able to reach her level. And that is exactly what happened. But Lata Mangeshkar also had to face her share of controversies and allegations of high-handedness and dominating the industry to reign supreme during her prime. Uh, 
her tilts with legendary co-singer Mohammad Rafi are a known fact. And Mohammad Rafi was also involved in a controversy over Lata Mangeshkar's introduction into the Guinness Book of World Records for claiming that she sung over 25,000 songs. Lata Mangeshkar was included in Guinness Book of World Records in 1974 for singing the most number of songs, which was estimated at 25,000. But this was challenged by Mohammad Rafi claiming he sang over 28,000 songs. Guinness included Mohammad Rafi's claim as a special mention alongside Lata Mangeshkar's entry but both were ultimately removed from the book in 1991. Lata Mangeshkar has been accused of jeopardizing the careers of singers like Suman Kalyanpur, who sounded very similar to her and even Anuradha Podwal among others. Her rivalry with her own sibling Asha Bhosle was very well depicted in a 1998 film called Saaz, allegedly based on their relationship. But in public, Lata Mangeshkar was always an epitome of grace and courtesy who was very, very soft-spoken. While she swept aside all the other female voices of 1950s after her career took flight, curiously enough, she shared a very close friendship and a bond with Geeta Dutt. She was also very close to Nargis and Meena Kumari. But the one heroine she felt did full justice to her songs was Nutan. And that was probably because Nutan herself was a singer. In 1962, Lata Mangeshkar raised the issue of royalties for playback singers even when Mohammad Rafi did not agree with her. Also, did you know that Lata Mangeshkar's first ever hit song, Aayega Aane Wala, was credited to the character Kamini first. But later, HMV, the music company, had to finally tell the radio listeners that the singer was a young woman called Lata Mangeshkar. Lata Mangeshkar is the singer who has a billion fans all over the world, but she was a diehard fan of the late Kundan Lal Saigal. Lata Mangeshkar never sang for composer O.P. Nayar, but it almost happened once. The recording had been fixed, the tune and the time were locked in, but for unavoidable reasons, Lata Mangeshkar never made it to that recording and O.P. Nayar never got over the missed appointment. Asha Bosle claims that the iconic song, E Mere Vatan Ke Logo, was meant to be her song. Composer C. Ramachandra wanted it to be duet between the two sisters, while Asha Ji wanted to do it as a solo song. But ultimately, as we all know, the song became immortal only in Lata Mangeshkar's voice. Everyone loves Asha Bhosle's Dam Maro Dam from Hare Krishna Hare Ram. But did you know that composer R.D. Burman had planned this song with Lata Mangeshkar first? It was in fact Lata Di who suggested that the song suited a lot more to her younger sister Asha Bhosle because of her style of singing. I'm sure you know that Raj Kapoor considered Lata Mangeshkar as his muse. But did you know she had a fallout even with him in the late 1960s? In fact, Raj Kapoor originally wanted to make Satyam Shivam Sundaram with Lata Mangeshkar in the lead, yes, as the heroine of the film. The film's story was of course inspired by Lata Mangeshkar's own life, according to Raj Kapoor. Years later in his book, journalist Veer Sangvi recalls Raj Kapoor talking about Satyam Shivam Sundaram in philosophical terms. Take a stone, he said. It is just a stone, but put some religious markings on it and it becomes God. It is how you see things that matters. You hear a beautiful voice, but only later do you discover that it comes from an ugly girl," said Raj Kapoor. V. Sangvi says that the showman later asked him to take out the ugly girl bit as it would upset Lata Mangeshkar. Strangely enough, there are many biographies claiming to present the real Lata Mangeshkar, but only she knows who she really is. And this soundbite that I'm going to play you next from one of her earlier interviews will not only shock you, but might even break your heart. <laughs> मुझे पहले भी किसी ने पूछा था तो वही जवाब मेरे पास है कि ना ही जन्म मिले तो अच्छा है और अगर वाकई जन्म मिला मुझे तो मैं लता मंगेशकर बनना नहीं चाहूँगा <laughs> <laughs> नहीं मुझे लता मंगेशकर की जो तकलीफें हैं वो उसको ही पता है Now, as per a report, her autobiography is still in the process of completion, but no one knows when it will see the light of the day. Today, finally, the iconic singer has left for the heavenly abode, whose voice was indeed her pehchan. Rest in peace, Lata Mangeshkar. Which is your favorite Lata Mangeshkar song? Also, leave your thoughts and prayers in the comments below. Connect with me on Instagram and on Facebook. It's at the rate review Ron. It's at the rate Ron Akuteja on Twitter. Like, share, subscribe, and please hit the bell icon if you've already done that. But as always, even if you don't do any of these things, thank you so much for watching this one. Please take care of yourself and those around you.
सुनने के लिए सिर्फ यादें रह गईं चंदन चला गया और इतनी दूर चला गया कि आरती के लिए वो फासले तय करना नामुमकिन हो गया मुड़ के जब भी देखा चंदन का चेहरा नजर नहीं आया गूंजते हुए माजी से सिर्फ इतना ही सुनाई दिया नाम गुम जाएगा चेहरा ये बदल जाएगा मेरी आवाज़ ही पहचान है अगर याद रहे